This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the Fanatic CSL Elite McLaren GT3 V2 steering wheel or wheel rim. This wheel rim is officially licensed by McLaren Automotive and is a full-size, detailed reproduction of the real-life GT3 race cars. This includes the switches, the paddles, the buttons, all coming from McLaren CAD data. The McLaren GT3 wheel rim starts off at $199.95 and is a redesign of the original version by Fnatic with updated electronics and a 1-inch OLED display in place of the fourth encoder of the real-life McLaren wheel in that center top area of the wheel rim. The CSL Elite McLaren GT3 wheel rim is also Xbox compatible. That is, if you use it with the appropriate Fnatic wheelbase, you will get that Xbox One Series X compatibility along with the pedals, shifters, handbrake, or any other Fnatic devices that you have plugged into the wheelbase as well. Now, I find it a little ironic to be reviewing a GT3 McLaren wheel rim because recently I just built my own. So holding this one in my hand hands is quite a contrast to the one that I built myself and they actually came in at fairly comparable prices. I think this one came out a lot better looking. Now for those of you who are familiar with the Fnatic lineup of products, you know the CSL line is really for their starter level sim racers and coming in at $200, I think the McLaren GT3 wheel rim is right at that right price range for your starter set and evenly matched with the CSL wheelbase. It also makes it one of the most affordable wheel rims on the market. And that includes the improved simple quick release. Now, if you're a podium user, somehow that wheelbase recognizes that simple quick release. And if you put this wheel rim on a podium as is, it's the equivalent of taking out the torque key, where it removes most of the power of the wheel, setting it to a wheelbase strength that is limited to what that quick release can handle. Now, luckily there is an upgradable quick release for those with club sport level wheels or podium level wheels, and they wanna use that same quick release mechanism, and that goes for $99.95. And when using that quick release, it uncorks the full potential or the full strength of the podium wheelbase, and that is exactly how I will be doing my testing with the wheel on more of a high-end level, even though it's still a $200 wheel 100 extra for that quick release, and it's up and running on the podium. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the McLaren GT3 wheel rim and some of its features, starting off with the fact that it is a full-scale replica, and it measures in at 300 millimeters or 12 inches in diameter. Its outer casing is made of a heavy-duty plastic with a faux carbon fiber finish to it. It has an elegant shape to it with gentle curves across the top and a slightly flatter bottom. In the center bottom of the face is the now very recognizable McLaren GT3 logo in three colors. The wheel has a nice variety of different controls starting off with seven very snappy and fairly good sized buttons. Three on the left and four on the right. They come stock with Xbox button covers but can be interchanged with the Fnatic supplied automotive ones. These buttons are almost a half an inch or 12 and a half millimeters across the face. There are another two buttons on the wheel that have become two of my favorite buttons of any wheels that I've ever tested. One for each thumb, one labeled N, one labeled P, and those buttons are shielded. They have a very nice cover protecting you from accidental pressing and the amount of pressure to make them press is very significant and means you will never accidentally press either of those buttons, making it perfect for pit limiter or anything else that you want to never accidentally touch. On top of that, the buttons are large, measuring it at three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters across their face. In addition to the buttons are a pair of switches, one on each side of the wheel. These are little tiny red up and down rockers and they have a little bit more of a delicate feel to them and can be moved very easily when compared to pressing the button. On the bottom left side of the wheel face is the now famous Fnatic 7-way funky switch with rotary, push button, and a directional pad all built into one. There are also three dials placed in the center of the rim, two marked with white and one marked in blue. The white marked dials 
being 12-step encoders, while the blue marked one is being used to select various clutch pedal configurations for different positions. Centered between the encoders is the small display. It's a 1-inch OLED and it's used for the tuning menu, mode selection, and in-game display when supported. Focusing our attention to the grips in the McLaren GT3 rim, they're about 7 inches or 178 millimeters tall and 1 and 3 quarter or 45 millimeters front to back. And if trying to measure across the face, they're about 7 eighths of an inch or 22 millimeters wide. They are made of a hard rubber. Fanatic says it's 50 Shore A hardness. I call it very hard with the tiniest amount of squish and they are molded into an ergonomic grip friendly shape. The back side of the CSL Elite McLaren GT3 wheel rim is also very impressive and unique. In the most bold and brilliant electric glowing orange color is the super rigid, super strong, and ultra beefy aluminum rocker style paddle shifting lever. The metallic shifters have a textured pattern in the contact area for added grip and measure in at about one and a half inches or 38 millimeters wide. The operation of the paddles is done with a rocker mechanism. The release point is controlled by a magnetic, giving the shifters a very strong release point. As a rocker, the paddles can be pushed or pulled, allowing for one-handed up and down shifting. These paddle shifters operate on a fairly short amount of throw, moving about a quarter of an inch or seven millimeters when pulled. Right beneath the paddle shifters are the additional multifunction paddles. These can be used in different modes selected by that blue dial. These paddles are made out of a plastic that also features a textured grip side and a honeycomb shape infill on the backside. These paddles have more travel and operate in a variable manner, much like a gas pedal or handbrake versus the on and off operation of a shifter paddle. Their full travel is smooth and is about three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters to full throw. When reviewing a steering wheel and considering the differences, things that I like or dislike of one wheel or how I prefer one wheel to another, a big factor for me is the buttons. It's not just the quality of the buttons. It's not just the positive click that I always talk about. It also can be the difference in variety of types because it helps my memorization of the steering wheel, helps me remember what button does what. When I have a good variety, it's a lot easier to remember groupings like this being adjusting air pressure or any other in-car adjustments. This obviously being a pit limiter. The other is having a good feeling. Getting that positive click, really letting you know that you've pressed the button, and especially these two, with that amount of pressure. You can hear it right there. Having up and down switches to do something completely different, but my brain can remember what those features are, and that really helps me. The other is having them in a good distance. Holding this wheel, I really do get good access to a fair amount of the buttons without even removing a hand from the steering wheel. That is also very important too. The final part of the wheel to really take a look at is that simplified quick release that has been improved in design. Now, coming in at $200 with a plastic quick release that right out of the gate, it tells you that it reduces the torque of the podium, which lets you know it's not intended for high torque wheels. It's really intended for that starter level market, using it on a CSL level. It's a nice quick release though. It aligns the pins, you simply twist the connector and your wheel rim is locked in. And at $200 for that level of a driver, I think that is a ton of features, a great looking wheel, and it keeps it down to that $200 price range. Now, I did want to test it on my podium. I did want to see how much torque this wheel rim itself could take. And for the $100 upgrade, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Even when you consider this, that still makes it $299.90, a nickel cheaper than any other wheel rim option for club sport level users out there or podium users out there. The quick release comes in black and silver and comes with all the needed hardware to make this switch. The changeover was very easy. Remove the six bolts that are holding the plastic quick release on and then remove the plastic quick release. 
The new aluminum one is keyed or can only go one direction on the wheel rim and once aligned, the six included bolts can be added. Torque them down evenly and it's now a club sport level wheel and will unlock the full power of the podium. The club sport quick release works like all of the other club sport level wheels. Align the keyed part of the wheel to the wheel base shaft and then firmly press it into the base until it clicks. I still find that I like to use the lockdown bolt that is supplied with both the podium base as well as the McLaren rim. And then finally, tighten the gold clamping mechanism on the base and we are all set and ready to race. When it comes to firmware, it really won't matter whether you're talking about the wheel on its own if you already have a Fanatic base, or if you got the wheel rim with a base, no matter what, you're still going to want to upgrade the firmware of either or both at this point in time. So it starts by downloading the drivers from the Fanatic website, and then installing the Fanatic software, and then firing up that software through the new icon on your desktop. Then double click on the wheelbase in that menu and it'll take you to the Fanatic tab where you can find the firmware update, follow those instructions. It's pretty intuitive, it's pretty straightforward, and I've showed you how to do it on just about every wheelbase and wheel rim we've ever tested here from Fanatic, so you should be pretty versed on it too. But it is simple and you can just do that when it's finished, close it down. So. We've told you all the details about the rim. We've showed you all of its features. We've talked about adding the quick release and all that. But for us sim racers, it really does come down to how does it perform on track. And for me, when testing a wheel rim, it starts with the hands. It starts with my grip and how does it feel when I'm driving the wheel rim. The rubber grips are a very good combination of hard with just enough squish to let you really grab onto them well. It almost sucks your bare hands onto the grips and the ergonomic form sets your hands nicely in position. I did find that the front side of the grip to be a little thin and edgy when I gripped the wheel too hard, but the overall comfort was nice. Now, despite that comfortable grip, I'm not a huge fan of rubber grips. So I also did a fair amount of my driving in gloves. The sharper edge on the face of the grips was no longer noticeable. With a nice grip on the wheel, I could focus my attention to how rigid the wheel was, or more importantly, was it flexing? Despite being made of a plastic body, the wheel's overall rigidity was very good, as in, there was no noticeable flex within the wheel itself under normal usage. Even when holding the wheel and attempting to flex it or twist it way beyond the use of sim racing, it was still very strong and resisted my torquing on it. When I look at the quick release while flexing on the wheel hard, I can't say that there is zero flex, but it is so minimal that it is irrelevant. With the Club Sport quick release, this wheel is rock solid. Rock solid? Well, that takes us to the rocker style paddle shifters. Let's face it, at first, it's a bit strange that when I upshift, my left hand has to not resist it by holding the paddle too strongly because the paddle is going to be pushing on my fingertips if they're on it. But the release of the magnets combined with the super rigid aluminum bar that is the paddle shifter, it has a very noticeable release point and it requires a very intentional move to make that happen. And that all comes with a very confirmed application of the shift. The feel of the shifter is good on the bare hand with a cold metal feel and a slight amount of grip to prevent slipping off the shifter. In the case of downshifting, it is the same story. A rocker style shifter is strange at first. When that left hand pulls the shifter, the right hand better be ready to not resist it. Despite being a different style, after only a few driving sessions, I got totally used to it and I never even thought about it again. That is, until the huge advantage of a rocker style paddle system. Let me show you real quick. So, if you're driving with 9 and 3 and you fully turn the wheel, you're fully extended, it actually becomes difficult for this finger to reach out and grab the paddle shifter. So, the advantage is I can press forward with this one. It also works out nice if you're trying to drive one-handed, grab a drink, or press a button box or anything like that. And that takes us to the secondary paddle shifters below the main paddle shifters. They are made of black plastic 
They have some thickness to them along with some heavy sidewalls and that honeycomb design inside to keep them strong. They are fairly rigid, but when sitting next to the shifters, it is obvious to the touch that they are made of plastic. The secondary paddles, in some ways, look to be the cheapest part of the overall wheel. But with that said, they work really well. They are variable. So depending on what you have them mapped to will offer from 1 to 100% of that travel or that control surface. That is perfect for a handbrake, perfect for a clutch, or can be mapped to any movable control, even look left or right. I also felt that on the wheel paddles, they had a good amount of resistance and as much travel as I could ask for in such a small space. These secondary paddles, no matter how they are used, are a nice bonus addition to the wheel. Now another feature of the CSL Elite McLaren GT3 wheel rim is that those analog paddles are actually programmable and they have different settings that could be configured using that blue dial for different settings to choose from. There's clutch bite point for F1 style racing starts, handbrake and clutch mode, with handbrake on the left, clutch on the right, brake and throttle mode, or just plain mappable access. So you can actually set it into any mode that you want. Again, you can have it for like F1 style launches. You could have it as clutch, handbrake, whatever your options are. I just left it as mappable and took care of that in game, but it's a great option for those with two pedal sets. For those looking for that F1 authenticity, you've got that all the way built into the rim. So earlier, I took you through the way the buttons felt, the way their tactile differences are, and I talked about their layout a little bit. I also have taken you through the way the wheel performed as far as mechanically. Was it rigid? Was it strong? How did it feel? But I want to take a moment to talk about the buttons and how they felt in my hands while driving, because that is one of the more important aspects of a wheel rim when comparing one to another. First off is the overall spacing. I did some of my driving in gloves, and this wheel rim has larger buttons, and they're spaced a little bit further apart than some other wheel rims, and that's a huge plus. But beyond the spacing and the feel of the buttons, again, I mentioned it's about groupings, about having different types of buttons, switches and dials, and how much easier it is to remember what they do on the fly. Having 10 buttons on a wheel is great, if you can remember what each one does. But it's a lot easier to remember that the left dial changes my menus or the right up and down switch adds or subtracts fuel or air pressure during a pit stop. I found that this layout was easy to use while driving. I also found it easy to map the layout in a way that was intuitive to sim racing. Perhaps this is where years of design from McLaren come into play. While driving, I found that I could operate three regular buttons, the heavy duty shielded button, and the little tiny red up and down switch with each thumb without removing my hand from the wheel. That is plenty of direct control at your thumb tips. Once I had used the wheel enough, I was happy with the way I had mapped all of my buttons. I decided it was time to bust out on those supplied button covers and labels and kind of pretty up or dial in my rim for some final touches. I went ahead and replaced the Xbox looking buttons with racing ones. And then in some cases, I added the little mini stickers as well. This made the already easy to remember layout even easier and quite honestly gave the wheel more of an automotive racing look. So that pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about the Fanatic CSL Elite McLaren GT3 V2 steering wheel. I've told you its features. We've talked about the Club Sport quick release. We've talked about how it performed on track. But just to be clear, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that being it's a great wheel rim for $200. It's a great club sport level wheel for $300. Nice looking wheel. Paddle shifters are extremely rigid. Magnetic release shifter paddles. One handed shifting. Great button spacing. Lots of buttons, encoders, switches, even a funky switch. Love the heavy pressure, large protected buttons. Upgradable quick release changeable button covers, cool stickers for labeling the wheel, 
built-in display, gear indicator, shift point, tuning menu, five profiles, extra paddle shifters, handbrake, clutch. Wheel works well for disabled drivers, gas and brake on the paddles. And now on to the not so good. Well, at $200, it comes with a plastic casing. Front and back side of grips are narrow. Plastic secondary paddles feel cheaper. Rubber grips, not for everyone. Stock wheelbase connector flexes. Tiny red switches feel delicate. Would like a third encoder instead of clutch mode settings. Add clutch modes to the tuning menu. And now onto the bottom line. The Fanatic CSL Elite McLaren GT3 V2 steering wheel is inexpensive coming in at only $200 with that standard quick release. That is relatively cheap. With this aluminum or the Club Sport quick release, it comes in at $300 and that still makes it a fairly inexpensive wheel rim. So we call it cheap. I mean, it is made of plastic but I feel the carbon fiber, it sells the look fairly well. The case, it has a good fit to it. The grips fit the case very well. The buttons are also very nice. It has a lot of really nice features for that price point. And for the people who own podium wheels, maybe you have a round wheel, maybe you're looking for a secondary wheel, well, it is the cheapest option. For those who are looking to upgrade to the podium line, this is the least expensive option, even at that $299.90 price point, making it even cheaper than the Formula Carbon. Coming in at $300, which has fewer buttons, standard style buttons, no magnetic shifters, but it is a real carbon fiber plate and it has LEDs and it does have Alcan Alcantara grips. Or you could compare it to the Formula V2 coming in at $369.95. Yes, the V2 has mini buttons, dials, even LEDs, but it has no magnetic shifters, no secondary paddles, and to get that, it's gonna cost you another $179.95, making it a much more expensive wheel rim. And then that takes us to the rocker style paddle shifters. And yes, it took some time to get used to, but in the end, it ended up with some of the stiffest, with some of the most positive magnetic release click that you're gonna get in a shifter paddle. And once you get used to it, that one-handed shifting, it actually ends up coming into play more than you'd expect. And that takes us to the secondary paddles. Getting that built into a same wheel at this price point is a little bit of a game changer. And here's the reasons why. If you bought a two pedal set recently, you don't have a clutch, you've been using a button, you can now assign it to a variable device, just like a clutch pedal. It moves like a variable device. If you've been rally racing, I know you wouldn't think of rally racing with a wheel shaped this way, but all of a sudden you now have a handbrake that could be anywhere from one to 100%. And that takes me to one of my final points. This wheel rim right here is gonna be one of the best choices out there for disabled drivers. If you know somebody who sim races and they're not using their legs to sim race or compromised in any way, having those extra paddles, having one-handed shifting makes this one of the best options for disabled racers, regardless of price that I've ever seen or test on the show. And that is awesome. That's the kind of thing, if you know someone disabled, you might wanna send them a link to this rim because it could be a great choice for them. So all in all, it's a good deal. It's a good wheel. It's a great option for CSL Elite base owners who wanna use that quick release. It's a great option for club sport owners looking for another wheel rim or just a wheel rim to get into the club sport or even the podium lineup. So I was very impressed. There's very little I have to say on the negative side of this wheel rim. Things like the rubber grips might be the biggest factor for some people. Maybe you just don't like rubber grips. Beyond that, there's not a lot to knock it for. I could ask that it was made of metal but then it would cost a lot more money. I, you would think it would cost more money with the types of buttons and the amount of selections that you have built into the rim. So I know I'm just gloating over this wheel, but I just built one of these wheels. I built one myself. It came in at nearly $200 and quite honestly, it didn't look this good at all. So I hope you enjoyed our review of the Fanatic CSL Elite McLaren 
GT3 V2 wheel rim. I hope I've told you everything that you need to know about it. And if you want to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to our channel here. And if you ever want to watch me race, my personal racing is done at Simpit Live at YouTube. Thank you for watching. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.